In this video, I'll show you how I've been playing Warhammer in isolation with a friend in another state. Things have been difficult for those of us who like to or need to get together with another person in order to play our game because of reasons. But even once those reasons are all behind us, sometimes people move away or we make friends with someone at a convention. You can't always stand around the kitchen table in order to get in a game of Warhammer or whatever other kind of uh, wargaming game it is that you like to play. I was watching a movie, I can't remember what their movie was, and in it there were these two people who played chess by mail, and that got me thinking, was there a way to essentially do that and use some of the fun apps on our phone in order to get in a game of Warhammer? And it turns out it worked pretty well. So I decided to play with my friend Tucker. We've played Warhammer together quite a bit, and we have a lot of the same kinds of stuff as far as um, a place where we can kind of dedicate to set up our Warhammer, the kinds of terrain that we have so that we can build our board, and most importantly, we have play mats. Now, not just sort of the play mats that you can buy that are terrain, that they look really fun, but we have these grid maps that we use for Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. And that was what was key. That was the most important part, and it was the thing that's the most different from our regular Warhammer. We got rid of the measuring tape and all of that completely, and we used this grid system. We have letters over here on one side and numbers on the other, and essentially treat it like a chessboard. So one of my pieces, I might have one of my rubric marines here in K12, and I would let him know that I moved it to um, B11. And he would move the piece that he had at his place in Baltimore that represented my marine, and that's what we did back and forth. It ended up being a lot of fun, and we were able to chat and just hang out and do a lot of the same fun goof-goof stuff that we do when we're playing in person. Of course, it was a little bit different. The other big thing is that we chose to play asynchronously, meaning we didn't like hop on a video chat service and play one session at a time. Our session took us about a week because we would play when we had time, but then we had chores or life or we had to go to work or something like that. So let me walk you through what our setup was. Here you can see the first thing that we did was just uh, get our map and do the letters and the numbers and find the grid. We found the center section and all of that stuff. Then we took turns placing all of our terrain. We decided that we were going to play a game that was just try to kill each other and that we wanted to set it up a little bit like a ruined city. So we had these uh, what turned out to be this sort of look of these corridors or this city square. And we would just back and forth saying, I'm placing this piece in this box and it runs the span from R10 through R7 or something like that. Now, one thing that was really helpful is we both have this same terrain. It's the Rampart terrain from Archon Studios. So if you like it, maybe check out picking that up. Um, I like it and it made something like this really fun. But I think you could do it no matter what you had. If you had a game of Floor Hammer or whatever it is that you want to have representing these pieces. Honestly, you can even also just draw your terrain on there if you really want to. But that does make it a lot more difficult for things like sight lines. I, I will admit that. So once we did that, we figured out what side did we want to be on and placement rules all by the same normal rules for Warhammer. We ended up playing Kill Team because the teams are just smaller. I had not played Kill Team before and I really wanted a chance to use my Thousand Sons. And so that's what we decided to do because this is a smaller playing field. It's about two feet by two and a half feet. That's a small board in comparison. And I had it set up just on the bed in my guest room. It was in a place where it could be out of the way. Now, that's a luxury that I have that you may or may not have um, to be able to set up a game someplace where it's not gonna be in your way 
at all. So that is something to consider if you want to try to play this asynchronous Warhammer in this kind of a way. But yeah, we set everything up and then we would just take our turns playing. We decided to use a video chat app in order to be able to send each other messages back and forth. Now, you could just do this through text or you could call the person. You could use something like, I don't know, you know, FaceTime or Skype or whatever. There's a lot of apps out there. We used Marco Polo simply because it was fun. We could, uh, you know, record ourselves and then uh, tell each other what our move was. Here's what we've got going on. The uh, rubric moved to Q20. The aspiring moved to R21. And the three Terminators held their ground and are um, uh, readied. This is what we've got over here. Um, we had a uh, the Archoflagent and the Endurant both advanced, so these two. So the Archoflagellant ended up on Q15, and the Endurant rolled a really nice advance and ended up on J18. And it was no pressure. We sometimes would have moments where we would play for about, you know, a half an hour, just back and forth, having a good time. And then every once in a while, we would send a message and then include the fact, be like, hey, I'm probably going to be done for the day because I got to, like, walk the dog and do stuff like that. Like I said, our game took us about a week in total to play. There were, of course, some challenges to this. We decided early we weren't going to ask each other to record every single one of our dice rolls. Um, I mean, if I can't trust somebody to tell me what they roll, then I'm probably not going to be playing with them in this fashion anyway. I trust Tucker completely, and so that's not much of a problem, but it's something to consider. Although it's an easy fix, every once in a while we would, you know, roll something and it was like, I, I got four fives and a six. Look, there they are. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to completely obliterate that unit over there. Um, and we would show them off. So it's a workaround that's definitely doable. And there were a couple of times where because of the, you know, board being set up and maybe my piece is like a quarter of an inch different than where his piece was, there were every once in a while times where I would say, hey, I think I've got pretty good line of sight to your unit, and I would sort of hold my phone behind my piece, and then just leave it in Tucker's hands and say, let me know. If you think it's obscured and I need a penalty here, um, just tell me, uh, but I think I've got a clear shot. It's all about the communication there. Also, you'll notice the different pieces that I have. I'm running my Thousand Sons kill team here, uh, but Tucker was running uh, Battle Sisters. Well, I don't have any of those minis, so I had to use stand-in proxies. So here you can see I've got a bunch of Don's Sylvaneth army, and I just used those in place of. And I'd actually go through and on the board with a dry erase marker, if it was a piece that I needed to remember, oh, this is his leader, I would just write that next to his piece and erase it and move the marks and whatnot as we moved around the board. The dry erase was really nice because it was easy to keep track of wounds, um, what turn it is, who was going first, how many command points do I still have, all of those little notes to myself. It was really easy to keep track of all of that, writing it directly on the board. So this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and it was a way to be able to play together and hang out and have a good time. There was no pressure. We didn't have to worry about, oh, do we have enough time for a game? Because it could take as long as it needed to. It does take up some space and it has to live there and be in a place where you're not going to have to worry about like, pets jumping up and knocking things over, or kids, or having stuff just in the way and no longer having a place to eat your breakfast in the morning. It's not a perfect solution, but it's pretty good. It's a new way to enjoy this wonderful hobby that we all have, and it's one more way that we can try to stay connected and still play games. Have you done something like this? Have you tried to play games, Warhammer, Wargaming, or anything else? A, a tabletop game that you and a friend both share. Playing asynchronously or playing through some of these digital tools that we have. I know that there's things out there like um, 
tabletop simulators and all of that. But I'm talking about having a physical copy that you both share and playing back and forth. Have you tried that? Or do you think you might give it a go? Let me know in the comments below. A big thanks to all of our patrons, and especially to RV. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. Thank you so much for watching this video. Here at Roll for Initiative, we put a video out every Tuesday, but we have a lot of other content. So make sure that you're following us on Twitter and Instagram and all of that fun stuff to figure out what it is that we're doing, where you can see us doing live play and actual play. And if you really like what we're doing, please go over and check out our Patreon. That is the single best way that you can support what it is that we do. You have access to maps and other fun things, some of the what we're up to, um, special polls and questions and interaction that's only for our patrons. So if you can and you're so inclined, joining us at Patreon would be really great. So happy gaming, stay safe, and until next time, I'm Ryan, and this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. <laughs>